Okay guys, sorry I couldn't be here today, but I did want to uh, at least make you this video so that you have something to look at as you try your homework on rational equations. Okay, so before we get going on examples, let's talk about a couple of definitions. First of all, a rational equation is just an equation that includes rational expressions. And we've already defined what a rational expression is. It's a fraction with a variable in the denominator. Okay, and then the other thing is an extraneous solution. We've already talked about extraneous solutions before, so we should already know that any solution of an equation that is not a solution of the original equation is something that we call extraneous. And so what we do is we plug our answers back into the original to determine if they work or not. And what we're going to have to be particularly careful of here is because we have variables in the denominator, we know that that can't be zero. The denominator cannot be equal to zero. And so that's how we're going to figure out what our extraneous solutions might possibly be. Okay, so here's our first example. What I want to do before I start is identify what my domain restrictions are so that I can check for extraneous answers at the end. So what I notice is that the denominator in this particular question is x, and so to find my domain restriction, I know that x cannot equal to zero. Whatever that denominator happens to be cannot equal to zero. Okay, once I get that figured out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the entire equation by all of the denominators that I see, which in this case is just x. Okay, if I multiply everything in this problem by x, then x times x is going to give me x squared. x times 5 is going to give me 5x. And this is going to equal to, when I multiply this term, Right here, by x, the denominator is just going to drop off, and so I'm just going to be left with 14. Okay, this is now a quadratic equation, so I have x squared plus 5x minus 14 is equal to 0. If I divide both sides, or I'm sorry, if I subtract 14 from both sides. And then what I want to do is I want to factor this and solve it. So if I factor this, this is obviously a trinomial that is fast because of the lead coefficient being 1. Okay, so I need factors of negative 14 that add to 5, and hopefully after you think about it for a second, you're going to write down plus 7 and minus 2 equals to 0, and so my answers are x equals to negative 2 and Po well, sorry about that, not negative 2 and positive 7. That's obviously a mistake. What I want to say is x equals negative 7 and positive 2. Now, are both of those actually answers? Well, you can obviously check your answer by plugging back into the original, but what you need to make sure of is that neither of these answers are domain restrictions. And so notice that my domain restriction back up here was that x cannot equal to zero. And since neither of my answers that I got are zero, we would say that neither one of those are extraneous. And so as long as we solve the equation correctly, those are the answers, negative seven and positive two. Okay, here's our next example. What we need to do first before we do anything else is factor our denominator. So if you look at this denominator right here, this is the only denominator that is not factored. So I'm going to rewrite this equation, 3x over x plus 5 plus 1 over x minus 2 equals to 7 over, and if I factor that uh, highlighted part in yellow, then I need factors of negative 10 that add to 3. And so that would be x plus 5 and x minus 2. Okay, now that I have all of my uh, denominators factored, I can safely identify my domain restrictions. Okay, so from the denominators, I see that x cannot equal to negative 5 or positive 2. Okay, so look at the denominators, figure out which numbers make that equal to 0. Those are your domain restrictions. Okay, what we want to do now is multiply the entire equation by every denominator that we see. So I see a x plus 5 as a denominator, and I see an x minus 2 as a denominator. Okay, so what's going to happen, I'm going to sort of try to use my highlighter here as I talk. Okay, when I multiply this term by x plus 5 and x minus 2, what happens, and I'll do this in red, is that x plus 5 and x plus 5 cancel, 
And so what I'm left with then is 3x, which was in the numerator, times an x minus 2, which came from over here. Okay, plus, now when I multiply this term by both of those denominators, the x minus 2 is going to drop off, and I'm going to be left with just 1, which was in the numerator, times x plus 5. Okay, and then this is going to equal to, when I multiply this term by both of those denominators, hopefully you notice that both of the denominators are going to drop off, and so therefore I'm left with just 7. Okay, at this point it is a quadratic equation. We need to distribute here on this side, and so what we're going to end up with is 3x squared minus 6x plus x plus 5 is equal to 7. And so what that's going to give us, if we collect some like terms, is 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, and so how did I get minus 2? Obviously here I just subtracted 7 from both sides so that I could get it equal to 0. Now at this point you need to solve this quadratic. So it's your choice whether or not you use quadratic formula or factoring. Okay, I'm going to use factoring, so... Um, I'm going to try to get a little bit of uh, extra space here. Maybe I can do this up here in this corner. Okay, so I need factors of negative 6 that add to negative 5. If I multiply the ends here, that's how I got the negative 6. Okay, so factors of negative 6 that add to negative 5. Hopefully, you would say negative 6 and positive 1. And so up here, I'm going to have 3x squared uh, minus 6x plus x minus 2 equals 0. From the first two terms, I can factor out a 3x, and that's going to leave me with x minus 2. And then from x and negative 2, all I can factor out is a 1, and so that's going to leave me with x minus 2 equals to 0. Therefore, I have 3x plus 1 times x minus 2 is equal to 0, and so I get x is equal to negative 1 third and x is equal to 2. Now, make sure that you go back before you move on. Go back and look at your domain restrictions. My domain restrictions for this problem were right here. Okay, are either of the answers that I got domain restrictions? Hopefully you said yes. Hopefully you said that x equals 2 is a domain restriction, and so because of that, that answer is extraneous. So we have x equals to negative 1 third, and x equals 2, which is an extraneous answer. Okay, here's our next problem. So the first thing that needs to happen is that we need to get all of the denominators factored. I see that this denominator is good and that denominator is good. The denominator that's not good is this one, so I'm going to factor out an x from that, and I get x times x plus 2. Okay, now that I have all the denominators factored, I can identify my domain restrictions which in this case is going to be x cannot equal to 0 because of this denominator right here, and also x cannot equal to negative 2 because of the denominator right here, and that is obviously the same restrictions that I get for that denominator that has both of those factors in it. Okay, what we're going to do now is multiply the entire equation by x and also by x plus 2. Okay, so if I multiply the first term by both of those denominators, the x plus 2 is going to cancel out, and what I'm going to be left with is 3x. Okay, if I multiply the second uh, term, so this term right here is the one I'm talking about, if I multiply that term by both denominators, they're both going to cancel out, and so I'm going to get 3x plus 6, so just 6 from that second term. Okay, equals to what's going to happen over here. Well, the x is going to drop off from that, and what I'm going to be left with is 3 minus x times x plus 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and foil out what I have on the right-hand side. So 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times 2 is positive 6. Negative x times x is negative x squared, and negative x times 2 is negative 2x. Okay, well I'm going to get everything onto the same side of the equation since this is a quadratic. Here's what I notice, and I'm going to do this in a different color, is that on both sides I have 3x plus 6. 
And so if I subtract that from both sides, it's just going to be gone. And then if I add the other two terms to the other side, I'm going to end up with x squared plus 2x is equal to 0. And now I need to solve this quadratic. Well, this is a binomial with a common factor. So I'm going to pull out the common factor. I'll do that over here. I get x times x plus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, x equals 0 and x equals negative 2. Okay, well, what you should notice is that both of these answers are extraneous because they were both domain restrictions back up here. Okay, so since they are both extraneous, then what that means for this particular uh, problem is that there is no solution. Okay, but when you're working your quiz, if this happens to come up or your test or whatever, what I want you to show is that you get these answers, but that they both happen to be extraneous. Okay, one last example here, and then uh, hopefully that will cover rational equations. So first of all, what do I notice? That uh, not all of my denominators are factored, and so I want to factor this one right here. x squared plus 3x is just going to be x times x plus 3. Okay, that will help me find my domain restrictions. So my domain restrictions are going to be that x cannot equal to 0, and also that x cannot equal to negative 3. Okay, so hopefully that is clear for you. All right, so now we're going to multiply the entire equation by both denominators, which is going to be x and x plus 3. Okay, so I'm going to go this direction here. If I multiply the first term, so I'm talking about this term right here, if I multiply that by x and by x plus 3, then x is going to cancel, and what I'm going to be left with is x plus 3 times x plus 3. Minus, when I multiply this term by both of those denominators, this time x plus 3 is going to cancel, and that's going to leave me with negative 2x. And this is going to equal to, when I multiply this last term right here on the right-hand side of the equation by both denominators, they're both going to drop off, and so I'm going to be left with just 6. Okay, what I'm going to do now is foil out the x plus 3 times x plus 3. So that's going to give me x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay, and then I'm going to have minus 2x is equal to 6. If I go ahead and collect all the like terms, I'm going to have x squared plus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, and how did I get 3? Obviously here I subtracted over the 6 to uh, make it equal to zero. Now I need to solve this by quadratic formula or by factoring. It's way easier if you just factor because this is a trinomial that is fast. Factors of three that add to four would be positive three and positive one. And so what I get is my answers are x equals negative one and x equals negative three. And at this point, you should know to go back and look at your domain restrictions and identify if any of our answers that we got are extraneous. And what I notice is that negative 3 was a domain restriction, and so therefore that answer is extraneous. So I have as my answers x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 3, but that answer is extraneous. Okay, so here's a summary of the steps for you to uh, look at. And obviously, if you uh, need that, then it's there for you. And uh, hopefully this video was helpful. Again, sorry I couldn't be here today. Um, I went to go get my Aggie ring, so I'll bring back the gold for you guys uh, after Thanksgiving. Hope you have a great break, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.